It's another edition of Time About the Movies. We're looking at the movies to wrap up the month of August 1991. The weekend of August 30th is what we're looking at. And uh, we've got three movies to look at. All of them I haven't seen. So this is going to probably be another really quick episode. So with that said, let's jump on into it. Let's start with the biggest new release of the weekend, which really isn't saying all that much. Child's Play 3. Um... For a movie that only came out nine months after the previous movie, you would really think that this was something like a back-to-back -back sequel type of thing with Back to the Future of the Matrix, where they just filmed the films back-to-back, -back, but nope, they rushed this one out pretty quickly, and it pretty much shows how little effort they put into this. I mean, I mean, the Chucky doll still looks pretty good, decent for what, for, still looks pretty impressive with the technological advances they were able to work with, but... With the movie that takes place eight years following the events of the of the last movie, one month before the events of Bride of Chucky, and then to have a film that wanted a guy like Arlie Ermey for the for the Colonel in this, but they couldn't even get him. Like, how awesome would it have been if Arlie Ermey and Chucky were in the same movie together? I think that would have been really impressive. But, but yeah, like like I said, I haven't seen the Child's Play movies, but I could probably t I could tell from this trailer here that this is definitely the weakest one of the series. In fact, most people would say. It is the weakest one of this original series. Even though that supposedly this is more notorious because of something that happened after the thing came out. Because uh, there was a claim that this movie had something to do with the murder of James Bolger. Uh, what had happened was that the killers, who were 10 years old at the time, were said to have imitated the scene in which one of Chucky's victims is splashed with blue paint. Although the allegations against the film have never been proven, the case led to some legislation for video films... Uh, somebody said that the link was a video was the f with the link with a video was the father of one of the boys had rented Child's Play three some months earlier. However, the police officer who did the investigation so found out that the father was not li the son was not living with his father at the time and was unlikely to have seen the film. Moreover, the boy didn't like ho horror films. A point later confirmed by psychiatric reports. Thus, the police investigation, which had looked for a video link, concluded that there was none. In other words, they the parent these these people completely lied. It was like it's like the whole thing with the Beavis and Butthead thing. If you remember what happened with Beavis and Butthead, somebody is a kid set his house on fire because of something that happened on Beavis and Butthead. That was the story, and then it eventually turned out to be not true and not and it's a complicated situation. So they just basically straight up lied to make themselves look. Is to make this movie look like it was part. It was part of something more malicious, malicious, but it was never confirmed that this happened. Like the Beavis and Butthead thing, you can make the argument that that did ha happen, but there were a lot of signs, warning signs, that say that that didn't ha happen the way it did. But in this case, somebody just made a complete lie about something when they when they put this together. It's, it's a weird thing. Like this movie's more notorious for the things that didn't happen than the thing that actually did happen. And the movie that happened is largely seen as a missed opportunity for the fans of the series that I've talked to. But, um... But, uh, yeah. That's really all I gotta say about that one. I just thought that was pretty interesting that they... A murder was connected to this movie that may or may not have been the case, but, um... But, uh, yeah. That's really all I have to say about Child's Play 3 because I can't really say anything about it. I haven't seen the movies. I haven't seen any of them, honestly. Um, but, um, yeah, Child's Play 3. So, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Beastmaster 2, Through the Portal of Time. And I think that's enough of that. I mean, seriously, when did the Beastmaster become a comedy? I mean, I guess they were trying to do something similar to what happened with Army of Darkness, but... Sam Raimi ain't involved in this movie, and this the people who made this movie clearly did not have the same mentality as Sam Raimi. I mean, Sam Raimi made The Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, two great horror movies, and then he made a great comedy sequel in Army of Darkness, a horror comedy sequel. This ain't none of that. This isn't... It's, I mean, the original Beastmaster is a guilty pleasure movie. It's a fun guilty pleasure movie, but... This is just a... This trailer just makes me not want to see this movie whatsoever. It's like they're trying... The la it's a lazy fish out of water story that stuff like Masters of the Universe tried and failed miserably at, not not but four years prior to this, and somebody's doing it again this time with Beastmaster, and of course it do and it just doesn't wor work from that tra from the trailer I've seen, it's not going to work, and I haven't seen I haven't seen anybody say that 
it's as good it's as good to watch with the Beastmaster, even though they tried to put it on the same networks that Beastmaster found its cult following with. But um Yeah, I got nothing on this one. This one looks pretty bad on so many levels, just for the the lazy attempts at comedy from that trailer alone, so there you go. That's Beastmaster 2 through the portal of time. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last movie, and that is Robbie Coltrane in The Pope Must Die. Or The Pope Must Die, depending on where you live. This is another one of those movies that has an alternate title to it, which basically just takes the T out of there and just calls it The Pope Must Die. This movie seems very... It seems like a movie that really could not be made today, and I'm surprised they made it back then. Uh, you can probably tell the movie had a lot of controversy with with what they were trying to do. It has a decent cast to it with the with not only Robbie Coltrane, but also Beverly D'Angelo, Herbert Loam, uh, Balthazar Getty, Alex Rocco is in this. But, um, yeah, it just seems really offensively bad. Like, it's a movie that seems like... They really had a good idea. They have. It seems like one of those really bad that ideas that may sound good on paper, but then you actually do, and it's just like, well, we can't do this. It's just like it reminded me so much of um, uh, that Heil Honey on Home TV series that they did with Adolf Hitler in a sitcom. They actually did this. They had a show where Adolf Hitler and Ava Braun were like in a '50s style sitcom with living next door to Jewish neighbors, and this is a real show, by the way. The first is I I think the first episode aired and then they had like 13 other episodes they did and then they never showed those other ones out. They, it was like gone after the first episode. Actually, now I'm curious to see if that first episode ever aired. It did air September 30th, 1990. It actually had 8 episodes. 7 of them still remain unaired. That first one aired and then everybody was just like, "No, we can't do this." I mean, this movie doesn't look like it's that bad of a show, a, a bad of an idea, but it's still pretty rough. If ABC, CBS, and NBC are refusing to show commercials for this because they say it's sacrilegious and offensive, and newspapers are not even bothering to show advertising for it, chances are you may have crossed the line there. So, yeah, it might have a good idea to it, but just the execution, just... I can see why this probably wouldn't play well, even today, even by today's standards. But, um... So, yeah, that's The Pope Must Die for you. And so on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next time around, we'll jump into September 91, and we're starting off with one movie, which usually I would do a full review for it, but I have never seen this movie that ki that comes out next week, and that is Company Business with Gene Hackman and Mikhail Baryshnikov. So could be another very short one next time around. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and until then, as always, take care.